Hey everyone, so back on the boat this morning. So last time we got all of this top sanded and we got all of the adhesive removed finally. So I think we're getting to the point now where we can actually start to fare uh, some of this top. However, it's five degrees outside at the moment and too cold for fairing. We're gonna use epoxy fairing compound um, and that needs to be at least 10 degrees and we've got quite a lot of condensation going off in here as well. So what we're gonna do is switch gears and we're just gonna move on to another little project that we need to do um, while the weather's a bit cooler, which is we need to get um, these windows sorted. So we've got the original windows. However, there is a small problem with them. One is they are different windows. So we've got uh, two windows, but they are both completely different styles, presumably one from an earlier boat and maybe one from a later boat. They're slightly different colors. Uh, one of them is also corroded quite badly so they would need stripping down powder coating and even then they might not be right because they are actually as I said two different styles so we're thinking we're gonna have bonded windows in here we think that would look a little bit cleaner we can then have an, an opening window in here as well and also we were getting a leak um, on this sort of corner here where the window met the molding and I believe that might be a bit of a common problem with some of these boats so we're thinking bonded window fill all of this space with glass we've spoken to a glass company already and we believe we can do it what we'll need to do is we'll need to fit a frame in here to actually carry the bonded window so we've already got a recess on the top here that would we can bond to but we need a something to bond to across the bottom here and up this back edge so what we're thinking is some sort of powder coated frame of some sort either aluminium or stainless steel so what we're going to do is we're going to also have an upright as well so there'll be a split in the glass and then that will allow us to have a, a horizontal opener after that so what we've done is we just put a piece of cardboard in, in here where we think that upright should sit and uh, what we're going to do is cut a piece of timber to go in there and then what we'll do is cut some templates out of 10 mil mdf to go inside here so we can get an idea of how big the glass is going to be how it's all going to fit together and then we can pass those templates to the glass company so first job is to get that upright cut and in position we're going to just hot glue it in into position that will be where our join is in the glass and then what we'll do is we'll cut these pieces of mdf now we've got of course the original window so we can use that to form a template certainly for that first part of first piece of glass um, it actually sort of cut down at an angle through here so it, unfortunately we haven't got the full shape but we have certainly got from about here forward so we'll be able to use the original glass to get a template for that forward piece and then we'll have to cut a piece of MDF to go in here so let's get straight into it Okay, so the first template is cut and that's looking really nice. Got a nice consistent gap all the way down here. 
So what we'll be doing with this is we'll actually, we've made it as a full size template and what we'll do is we'll 3D scan this into CAD and then in CAD we'll actually remove 10 millimeters all the way around and that will allow us a sealant gap that we need to seal the glass into place. Once we've got that CAD drawing we can send that off to the glass manufacturer and have that glass made. So what we need to do now is cut the next piece which is this back bit. So we've got the back template now cut and that fits really nicely we've got a nice tight gap across the bottom here and pretty good on the back edge remembering there'll actually be a 10 millimeter sealant gap as well when we actually bond this window into place so that's pretty good we're happy with that so next what we're going to do now that the weather's just got a little bit warmer we can switch gears and move on to doing some fairing so we've got some fairing on the back here to do so these joints where the mouldings were actually joined across the top here it's just got a very slight um, sort of low spot and also we've got some low spots along here as well again which is where the joint is in fact I can't even see them now but they're really small but they'll show up when it's painted so we just need to make sure we do get rid of them so ah, there's one there bit of a low spot there and then I think we've got bit of a low spot just a little bit further along here and then we'll need to do the same on these joins here as well where the what we call the b pillar front and back moldings there's a joint here so we'll just need to finish sanding that and we'll get some fairing in there and similarly on the front here we've got a joint under here as well so there's a joint that comes up through here and then it actually runs back this way so we need to to fair all that as well so uh, let's get some fairing mixed up well get it acetone clean first get some fairing mixed up and get that put into place Fairing is on, that went on really nicely. We just used the Total Boat Total Fair. Uh, it's mixed one to one, really nice and easy to mix and nice and easy to use. Good working time and takes about two or three hours to set up. So yeah, really happy with that. So we've done all of the back here and then we've gone down each side of the top of this molding. And then while I've been doing that, Richard has just been prepping and finishing off these rail channels on the top so we had a couple of screws just stuck in the back there so he's managed to get those out and then he's been along and just cleaned all these holes out here again and just re-acetone them so this is now all ready for thickened epoxy and then as you can see we've put some masking tape in place as well so i think we're hoping just to pull the thickened epoxy across the top and then we'll peel this masking tape off and that should hopefully then just keep that nice and neat and keep the mess down as much as we can and he's done the same on this side as well 
So again, some stubborn screws stuck down there. Got all those out. These are all dished out. Acetone, all cleaned across the top and masked, ready to go. So all we need to do now is just mix up some thickened epoxy. So today we're going to pick up where we left off before. So last time we put some epoxy in all of the holes in our track gutters. So all the way along there and all the way along here. So what we need to do now is we'll come in with some soapy water and just get all the aiming blush washed away. And then we can sand this and then we can apply some furring to get a nice smooth finish. It has gone a little bit orange for some reason, not sure why that is, but we have already just done a little test piece washed it and sanded it and it came back nice and clear so not too concerned about that and then we've also got the fairing that we did last time on the back of the radar arch to sand and also down the sides. So here Richard is removing the last couple of sheared screws. We are then using 120 grit sandpaper to knock down the fairing compound. All joints and seams on the moulding also need to be checked and sanded, ready for primer.
Okay guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one.